Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Bender and Ash Paulson to discuss the latest Nintendo Labo trailers. So let's get started. Alright guys, so Nintendo posted a couple more trailers last night on the official website, and they thankfully posted them to, to their YouTube channel today um, in actual high quality, or good quality at the <laughs> least. Um, and they actually show off a fair amount more about Labo. I mean, we've already had like... You know, hands-on impressions, we talked to the Nintendo Power couple about what they thought of the Labo with them building it and trying it out. But um, one question we still had is, uh, how much is there really to do in these different co in these games, in these toy cons? Like, how much content is there actually there? And based on the latest round of trailers, a fair amount, it seems. So I thought it'd be fun to just go through these, maybe one by one, and just talk about, you know, our overall impressions of what all we can do with the toy cons now, and if we think it, you know, if it's warranted the investment so far. Uh, but before we get to that, I guess maybe just we'll start off with like just general impressions based on the trailer so far. I mean, it's an impressive package. There's there's no two ways about this. Like the way they're the variety pack or robot or both. Both. Okay. Honestly, like it is. Um, like it's amazing how much you can really do and how much versatility they're getting out of the Switch and the Joy-Cons when it comes to these different games and the things you can do and just the ideas on display in order for kids to just do whatever they want and uh, at least when it comes to the uh, robot it's like that is way more versatile and the game itself and we'll get into this when we actually talk about when we actually talk about it but that game is way more fleshed out than I ever expected yeah yeah, I mean, it, it really, I, it's really nice that we got a, kind of a more in-depth look at the actual software element of, of Labo, just because that was kind of the big question mark earlier, I think, and it does seem like there's at least some amount of depth in these games, a little, maybe a little more than we were expecting. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm convinced that there's a ton of depth to them yet, but it does seem like, it, you know, there's, it's certainly more than, you know, you turn it on, you play it once, and you're kind of, you've seen what there is to see. No, there's definitely some staying power. I just don't know, you know, how much staying power there is, but it's clear there's at least some. Right, yeah, I actually totally agree with you there, Ash. Um, like, I, I'm i impressed by how much content there is, but I'm not sure as to the depth of that content quite yet. <laughs> I like what I've seen so far, like, I want to try all this, uh, but yeah, there's still that question of, like, how much longevity is this? Is there really to this beyond the actual creation process, but... Anyways, with that uh, out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the specifics here. So we'll, let's start off, we'll just go in the same order as, as the trailers, basically. We'll start off with the variety kit, and the first one they showed off was a Toy Con RC car, where we learned a little bit more about its functionality, like how it'll have um, a special function screen where you can apparently adjust, like, the frequency, uh, the frequency of each individual Joy-Con, you have like little levers on the side. Um, you also have like this cool night vision like camera where you can see what your RC car is seeing and it'll, should, like including targets to set up for it and how it'll follow those targets so you can create like a little track for it if you want. And it also works in the dark which is demonstrated by putting a cardboard box of course over the Toy-Con. <laughs> um, and my favorite part of course is where they go straight up battle bots with this thing yeah. and have one like tipping over the, tipping over the other. I love the sound effect they played, like the dramatic sound effect they played when when the one r robot or the one uh, RC car lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was like this really intense, like, it, and it was just so, you know, when you look at it, it's so dumb. They're just kind of like digging into <laughs> each other, but it was so <laughs> right. dramatic and the trailer is great. Yeah. The RC car to me is probably the least impressive of the package. I mean, it, it's also the simplest, so that makes sense. Um, but, you know, I, I watched some of the little uh, videos they had on the website, most of which are part of the trailer itself. Um, but the RC car, they show it shaking around and moving forward and whatnot. And they actually had to fast forward at a certain point to so just, like, get, get on with it and really show what it's capable of. So I think as an RC car, it's not really that impressive because this thing does not move that fast at all. No. Granted, it's moving because of the Joy-Con's powers, uh, so that makes sense. But as far as what the Joy-Cons can do in conjunction with the Toy-Con, like the night, like I didn't know it had a night vision camera. What the heck? <laughs> uh, someone didn't listen to our uh, Nintendo Power Couple discussion. <laughs> no, I heard about it before, but it's also, even at that point, I right. did not know before yeah. that discussion. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way you said uh, with the Joy-Con's powers. It makes it sound like the Joy-Con themselves have crazy powers. But but no, actually extrapolating from that, I even though maybe on paper it might be the least interesting. On cardboard, I'm really, you mean? On cardboard, well said, yeah. 
it, it may be the least interesting to actually like go out and do and play with, but I'm really fascinated by the technology yeah. behind it. Like I, I, I have long been saying that I think HD Rumble is low key one of the Switch's coolest features, and this bears that out. I love the idea that the the HD Rumble is fine enough that it can detect. You know, you can either go left or right. You can, as you said, Andre, tweak the frequency of either Joy-Con. I just think that's the coolest thing. That it can even do that, but I but I agree with you, Derek. That you know, in actual practice, it probably is the least interesting of either that or the ToyCon house, which we'll get to. That's <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that either. But I just like the technology on display in this one with the HD Rumble. I think it's super. Yeah, neat. I mean, I think it's impressive that it works at all. Like I tried building my own, yeah. and that did not work in the slightest. Um, so the fact that yeah. even though it doesn't move very quickly, the fact that it's moving at all at a clip faster than my pathetic attempt <laughs> got you, uh, I think is pretty cool. So. I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't... This one might be might have the least replay value of them, but, you know, who knows? Maybe if you have a second player there. It does come with two RC cars. So I could see that adding a little bit of fun, but then again, you know, how intense can those races really be? <laughs> Moving on. We had the Toy Con Fishing Rod, and the detail there is actually pretty impressive. We saw that there's a variety of fishing and catch. It has some nice water effects. I actually slowed it down when the camera dips underwater, and, like, the, the water looks really nice. Like, I want a wave race now. Where's my wave race, Toy Con? Um, <laughs> oh, right. And then even when the water, or even when the camera comes back up above the water, there's, like, water left on the lens. Um, but probably the coolest thing I thought was when they, was when they revealed how you can use that game in conjunction with another Toy Con being the piano, because apparently if you set it up on the piano, it becomes an aquarium, where you can then look at all of your, all the fish you've collected, which is kind of neat touch. And it, even going beyond that, is you can use the piano and its sort of scan feature that, from the, that on the top of it to create your own fish, which I did not expect. Um, I think that's something kids could get really into, where they just cut out a pattern. It doesn't have to be made out of cardboard. It can just be paper. It'll scan where the hole's left and then you just stick eyes on and there you go. You got yourself your own fish. And granted, it's fishing. You know what you're getting into there. But there's again, there's nice touches. There's the aquarium showing off what you've caught. There's tons of fish to catch. There's a goal there. There's the added dynamic of catching a smaller fish and then having a bigger fish eat it to catch that fish. So there's a little bit here that I think kids can really enjoy. It's funny, like, Nintendo continues to make a believer out of me out of fishing games, because, like, in real life, I, I count fishing and golf as, like, the two least interesting ways you could ever pass your time, personally. <laughs> but first with that Street Pass game, I was like, oh, Street Pass fishing, this is going to suck. It was actually really fun. And then Toy-Con fishing, I'm like, I'm not going to care about this. And then I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh, this actually looks pretty cool. And I, and I was uh, recalling what the Nintendo Power Couple said about the tactile feedback you're getting as you're reeling the fish back in. And I'm like, you know what? That actually seems like it'd be really cool. I was, so yeah, no, yeah. I was impressed with like um, not just the feedback, but the level of interaction with how it seemed. Like you could see when you were adjusting the rope or your rod in real life, how it was instantly reflected on the screen, like at the at the exact point where the rope was, you know, connecting to the screen um, or the dock, I guess. So yeah, I thought it was just yeah. It, it does seem like a well done fishing game, and I have to say, I freaking love fishing and back in Ocarina of Time. So if you can capture even a small amount of how much fun I had back then. Uh, that could be well worth it, so... True. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how fun the actual fishing process is, but... I think, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool so far. Moving on, we got the Toy-Con Motorbike. Uh, which is something, again, we, they revealed a few more details on. We, one, we saw how the gameplay actually kind of worked. Where it seems like there's really two modes. There's one where you go around popping balloons. Um, in, you know, to get as many points as possible in a, like, time trial. And then there's an actual race where you're racing opponents. Uh, and you can do like power slides, you can do wheelies, and it looks like you even honk your horn for just some kind of effect. Like you, these little like audio waves came out. So I wonder if that actually does affect your opponents at all. Um, I actually I thought this looked fun. Like I'm one who I'm one of the people who actually loved using the steering wheel in Mario Kart Wii. I actually just did that again a few days ago. I was playing with my sister and we were using the Wii wheels. And I look at this, you're holding the thing against your body, you're leaning into the turns. As one who owns a motorcycle, I'm like, yes, this looks kind of cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I'm pretty impressed by the uh, by what I've seen in the motorbike. Like, it looks like there's actually more Mario Kart-like gameplay there than I expected. Yeah, I have to agree. This actually looks like the most interesting part of the variety pack to me, like by far. Mm -hmm. And the others you know, look pretty cool, but this one just looks... I mean, I love racing games in general, and... Depending on how it feels physically, like you know the the labo feedback and how it feels to actually you know t turn the handle and and stuff like that, I could see this being a lot of fun. Like I, I love that you can power slide. It seems like there's a certain level of you know technical mastery to it where you're, it's just not basic gameplay. So 
yeah, I, I think it seems really fun, and I love how you can, you know, the you can, I don't remember exactly how it works, but you can, like, uh, hold, like, an object, and the in-game, like, land or track will mirror that object, like a hand or something <laughs> That like is that. gonna be so abused cool. so Oh, yes. Much. Oh, man, you, you, yeah, you well. went there. Um, you no, know, the track crater looks freaking awesome. If only because it instantly reminded me of Excite Bike 624, which had an amazing track crater as well, including like it was just a square arena like you see here. Um, but the way they're going about it here is a little bit different than your conventional track crater, because as you guys just mentioned, one of the ways is to scan in an object, they use their hand, Derek, in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another way though is we finally found out how. Um, what that little motorbike toy con does, which we were run which we were running about in your analysis and our discussion previously. Like, what the hell is that for? And it turns out it's like a paper airplane, kind of, where you move it around in 3D space, and that controls the little guy on the screen, and that you can actually like change a track layout in, in real time. Like you're or you're making it in real time. You're like you're flying around that creates a track, and then apparently I believe you can go in afterward and adjust parameters for it, like the weather, the time of day, um, the track width, and all kinds of things. It looked like water level as well, so you yeah, might be able yeah. to get your uh, your uh, wave race. Uh, there we go. Hey, I, I yeah. think however I can get at this point. So <laughs> no, it looks there. There's a lot of versatility to this one, and I think that I agree with Ash. This is probably my favorite in the package, just mm -hmm. because it seems the most fleshed out. I like that the the track creator is Wait, it's fleshed out. The best word to use here, given your previous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I've, I've already seen somebody like, uh, I, no, I don't know if anybody's actually done it. They might have just manipulated, photoshopped the footage and whatnot. But like the, um, they used like the burning chibi robo as like the land mass. <laughs> nice. Uh, and nice. All that. But like, that's the thing. You could scan in your amiibo and have fun with that. But you know people and that's, you know, they're going to, there's going to be something bad in there. Well, that's point. why it's not going to be online probably. So exactly. There's Thanks, probably people. no online to share yeah. your, uh, courses, which is probably for the best. Um, although they might surprise us, who knows? Uh, but even just if they're not creative, the creative types, there's they have um, three grand prix to go through. You can set how many laps you have. You can set how, your speed. There's like actually uh, quite a bit there, just single player content before they even decide to get creative and see what they want to do themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like the idea that the track creator is just zoom it all around and whatever you want to do and you just watch the screen and like, yeah, yeah, this is what I want to do. And you don't have to think about it. You just sort of put it together and then clean it up after you're done. I think that is a really great way to handle this. Yeah, it looks really smart. Like, I'm a huge fan of, like, anything that allows creativity. Labo already at its base level seems to allow that, but on top of that, with you being able to create tracks, it just seems really fun. And also, by the way, not only does this remind me of, a, of Excite Bike uh, 64, but also with the Popping Balloons mode, reminded me of Stun Race FX with the stunt mode, so... Oh, jeez, <laughs> you and that game. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand your love for that game, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind you of this conversation mm. uh, if Wave Race ever comes up again, because you did, you know, you've been talking to Derek about, you know, keeping it to just the hands, but you did say you take a new Wave Race, ex however you can get it. So <laughs> I'm just saying the the options are there to create water tracks here and water yeah. levels. One thing that I hope is here, but we didn't see it. So I'm thinking it's not is any kind of two player, right? Like we didn't see any competitive. Um, we didn't see anything, but it almost makes sense that you would be able to do that, you know? Well, well, of course. I mean, it's a racing game, for one. And also, like, you know, as fun it will be to make my own tracks, I think it'd be way more fun to race on those tracks with a friend. <laughs> Theoretically, yes. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah, yeah. It's weird that they haven't shown that off, which kind of makes me think there isn't any two-player for that, for whatever reason. I, maybe they just weren't able to... You know, in terms of, of the scope there, mm -hmm. maybe it just wasn't tenable. But yeah, it, it is. You'd think that the two player was part of it, that they would have shown that off, right. like the RC cars. Yeah. Hmm. Um, one yeah. thing, one thing I want to touch on real quick too, by the way, is um, just the overall visuals across all these games. Like they look high quality. Like these don't look like some quickly thrown together thing. They look like they had some major resources poured into them. Um, just yeah, yeah. The, the fishing especially. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at some gameplay yeah. of that. So. Yeah. Um, I realize I skipped over one, going out of order here. There's the Toy Con House, and Ash, I believe you had something you wanted to say earlier, so why not start off this section for us? Yeah, well, it was funny, because I thought you had skipped it, but I was like, did I just not remember the trailer? Did the I thought the house came first, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, I don't know. Of, of all the different things in the variety pack, the Toy Con House seems to me to be the least interesting just looking at it in the trailer. Like, I, I think the tech behind it's cool. I like that you can switch out the different 
knobs and things, and depending on where you put them, the effects are different. And it seems like there will be a lot of different combinations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's cool, but I just, for me, I, I envision myself playing it, and I can see my interest just waning in that after seconds. Like, I I don't know, it just seems like you're watching this character react to things, and, you know, and, and changing the backgrounds, and, you know, you can lull him to sleep, or lull it to sleep. You know, and it does look like there's some more gamey elements, like a, you know, the bowling mine thing, cart, the minecart yeah. course. But overall, I just feel like I would lose interest in this very quickly, at least based on what they showed in the trailer. I mean, it's basically what we always thought it was. It's a Tamagotchi. It's a different way to yeah. take care of this little creature. Interact with them, see what happens. Uh, and, you know, uh, kids will get into that. This is definitely for the younger crowd. I can't imagine somebody a little older getting really into this. They might. It's still possible. Um, not doesn't really do much for me, but I, this one actually does have multiplayer. There, there's a little bit they show where the bit with the string where you can not, like have this tel uh, portal constantly go through and, uh, and everything seems to be able to interact with another person's um, uh, house and you can I guess send over your buddy I'm not I'm not quite sure they didn't fully go into it but I I, I like the options I like their all the different ways like it just interacts like oh if this and this is here then we can do this and just seeing all the combinations I can see that being pretty fun so you know, if it were actually a proper Tamagotchi type thing, I think that would actually have more gameplay here than what I'm even expecting right now. Um, because at least with that, like, you kind of have a goal of keeping your pet alive. And here, I think, you know, it has, like, those Tamagotchi-like activities, but I think it's missing that over, the overarching goal of, like, you know, taking care of this guy. Maybe that isn't here. But I have a feeling, like, I think as Ash was saying, like, you just come in here, you interact with him for a little bit, and then go away. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. With that said, though, I think... I think it will be fun just to plug in the various the various tools, the various um, whatever they call them, like the plugs or the blocks or whatever, and see what they do. Especially because it does change, like depending on where you put it and how they and which ones you plug in, it changes not only their function but how they interact with each other, including the house as well, like completely changing the background. I yeah. like the one that turns into a portal and you just see things going in and out. So that was pretty yeah. cool, I gotta say. But like, but then what do you do with that? I mean, that's like, it. That, and I think that's my thing. I, it's like, oh, that's really cool, and then. 20 seconds later it's like okay well that that's really cool but then what else can i guess i'm curious like what else can you do with i think it's a little i think anything. it really is just a toy box like it literally yeah. is a toy box you plug in things see what they do and that's it so yeah this one might have right. some of the least potential replayability here unless those mini games are really fun so um also am i the only one creeped out a little bit by the creature itself with its like all-purpose face hole thing <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, that's the other thing. I, I'm really creeped out by the design of that thing. I don't like it at yeah, all. Yeah, like it, it, it. At first glance, it seems to eat with its eyes, but it almost. It, but instead, it like pulls down in front of its face in order to shove it in there in that black hole. So, well, I, yeah, okay. I'm almost wondering: is it like a different creature inside wearing a costume or something? Maybe. Yeah, it almost looks like he, that, like, he right? pulls off his skin yeah. at one point. So that'd be really creepy if it's like he pulls it away from his eyes. So I think it's got to be wearing a costume or something, so... Maybe. Or maybe it really is as, as scary as we <laughs> yeah. think it is, because it really is weird. Maybe. Like, I was thinking that when I was watching the trailer, I'm like, what is this thing, and why am I vaguely creeped out by <laughs> <Right>? it? Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, I think it looks fun, um, but yeah, you know, who knows how much it really is to do theirs. I mean, the thing is that all these are going to be kind of basic in their own ways, just because they are a variety pack, they're all coming together. So you right. don't have to worry about any one, you get bored of one, you move on to the next. You know, it did remind me, actually, a little bit of... Do you remember that Rabbids game that had the rabbit living inside the Wii Remote? You can just like this, shake it around, and he'd react in different ways. He'd bounce off the walls. This this seems to be a little bit more of a fleshed out version of of that. Hmm. Uh, I'm not gonna lie and say I do remember that. I really yeah, don't, I don't but either. I'm but gonna take your I, I believe take you. Your word okay. for it. <laughs> well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was pretty cool. Like it was a pretty cool thing. Like it you know showed off how the Wii Remote could sense all these different things, and yeah. So I like I kind of like that. This harkens back to it, but seems to be a little bit expanded, even if not by much. <laughs> so mm. we'll see. All right, um, finally for the variety kit, we have the Toy-Con Piano. And this one is probably already one of the more impressive ones. And yet, they somehow added even more onto it. So now we've got a proper look of how you can um, add in the button type things to change the sounds. You saw like a grandpa, um, cats, and something else I can't quite recall. But on top of this, you can apparently um, cut out cardboard into these like waveform type things, insert it in, and that will like change how it sounds. And on top of that, 
it has these uh, music cards, you can punch out little holes in it, insert that, and actually play it like one of those actual mechanical pianos, like, you know, you see in, like, Western the, films or... Yeah, the player piano. Yeah, which is freaking awesome. Like, I'm already picturing now, people will, like, figure out how to make these songs, you just follow the templates online, and you can have, you know, like, add your own Star Wars music, or, you know, a Mario <laughs> theme, or whatever. It reminded me of the Mario Paint Player's Guide, that you could just follow along to make these pretty epic-sounding creations, even if you have no music creation ability yourself. That was the best player's guide. God, I love that thing. <laughs> right? Oh. It, it truly was. It was amazing. So, yeah, and and you, you're totally right. Like, I, I'm so impressed by the depth and the functionality here with the Toy-Con piano. Like, all the different things you can do. My only concern, and I do love the idea of those, like, punch-out cards that you insert. I'm just wondering, like, how quickly are you going to burn through those? If you really get into the Toy-Con piano right. and you want to make all these different songs or, or backbeats or whatever... How many are there, and how quickly are you going to burn through them, you know? You might be able to recreate them with paper, because they do show mm. a certain section of them, like, tracing, like, the, with the waveform idea. They trace the the basic shape of the, um, uh, what you slot into the top, and then cut out their own waveform, and then stick the piece of paper in, and it worked fine. You don't need the cardboard, so maybe if you recreate the basic idea of those punch cards on a piece of paper... You should be good to go. That'd be my guess. But again, that's effort on your part that to actually do all that. Oh, I hate effort. Effort's the worst. <laughs> I mean, you're already creating this thing. It's going to take three hours to put know, together. Right, so. <laughs> right yeah. yeah, true. I mean, ideally, yeah, like if you can just use paper, you can just print these out, print out other people's creations right. and insert it in your own. Um, but yeah, I, I love everything about this. I love like there's a whole like, creation studio now, which is where those cards come into play. How how many different tools you have available, how you can change the like the envelopes and the reverb and there there was even one mode that showed off how you can use the Joy Cons, put those on on a like on a cardboard box in a trailer or any other thing you have, and you can use the Joy Cons to make their own sounds by <laughs> typing on the keyboard that or on the uh, piano. That sounds like mm -hmm. that's just amazing to me. It's so incredibly versatile. Heck, there's a conductor mode that looked yeah. way better than we yeah. than, than we music, and how you can like it does adjust how how fast everything plays by how fast you shake the Joy-Con. I mean, it can, it's simple, but it's still like okay. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. This actually does kind of take the concept of Wii Music and more fully realizes it. Um, I mean, it helps that you actually have literally a piano in this case to to mimic a piano instead of like <laughs> just using two Joy-Con or two um, Wii remotes as if you're on a piano or something. Uh, but yeah, like this seems just like a really clever idea. Like a lot of these ideas harken back to things we've seen from Nintendo before, but with a little bit of a different twist or maybe flushed out more than they were before. I just realized we've been using flushed out a lot in this discussion. I don't know yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I mean, the piano really is probably one of the most impressive ones here. Well, yeah, and I, and I think it's also impressive because they could have chosen to like stop adding completely optional, you know, features and doodads in there at any time. <laughs> they, they didn't have to add, you know, the, the abilities to uh, tweak the envelope or the reverb or anything like that. They could have just had a basic piano and people would have thought that was cool enough, I think, just in terms of the tech behind it. But no, they just decided to throw everything in there and it's really impressive. Like, they, they seem to have to have accounted for so many different creative possibilities in terms of, you know, I don't, I don't know if I how many situations I see where people have Labo and they want to do something and they actually can't. Like, I feel like it's so versatile that almost whatever you can, you know, really think up you want to do, you could probably do it, or at least find a way to, you know, engineer it yourself and figure out how to do it. I mean, the garage seems versatile enough to, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's it. All right, so that covers us for the variety kit, but there's still one more Toy Con, or more specifically, another kit to talk about, and that's the Toy Con Robot. Um, where we found out there are, in fact, multiple modes. You saw the the main mode, I believe, where you go around like punching buildings and. Um, UFOs and cars, which still looks really fun, especially because we learned out or we learned more about how you control it, um, how you can turn into a car, you can fly around as a car, you can fly around as the robot even by extending your arms. Um, you can shoot laser beams, you go in first person to shoot. Uh, you can turn into a gigantic robot by doing this weird Mario pose. <laughs> <laughs> um, like that just looks really fun to me. Like it, it actually reminds me of uh, the early Kinect trailer where you saw the kid mimicking like a giant Godzilla-like creature. I don't think that ever actually came out, so this seems like. This seems like the realization of that of that idea. Um, but beyond that, there are other modes that I touched on. We have a challenge mode where you uh, seemingly like drill in deeper into those um, specific moves, like how you can combine moves, like you can fly in the air, then do like a drill kick into the ground. 
Um, so yeah, it seems like there'll be a variety of different challenges to attempt. And then there's also a battle mode if you can find someone that also has their own robot kit. To have them bring the whole thing over to your house. <laughs> and you can battle together. And which looks, which reminded me actually a bit of um, Virtual On, I think. That, yeah, yeah, that robot mech fighting game in arcades way back in the day. Uh, which, anything that reminds me of that is an instant winner in my book. So, uh, right. even if, again, the odds of you being able to play this as another kid are probably pretty unlikely. <laughs> so That's the thing. I, I feel like, you know, the actual reality of, of, like, two people playing, like, Toy-Con robot versus mode against each other, I feel like the number of people who are going to get to do that will be even less than the people who got to play, like, a full session of Four Swords Adventures. Oh. With, like, a full four Game Boy Advances <laughs> and Link Cables. And that's, like, a really low number. Yeah, so I, I think we're talking about even lower than I that. I think you're right, man. I think you are already totally right <laughs> yeah. there. But it's expensive. It's, un it's, it's a pain to bring around with you. But it seems like it would be really cool if you go through the effort and the trouble to actually, you know, do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea that they, they, they fleshed this out enough that... There we go again. You learn... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Take a, take a shot. <laughs> um... No, the fact that you can increase the abilities of your mech the, as you go through. Like, okay, now your mech can do the drill kick you mentioned. Now it can do this move or this move, and it's really cool. I like the idea that the visor is just sort of there to switch between uh, first person and third person. Your choice, right. how you want to do that. And it's such a simple thing, but sure, why not? Let's go with it. And the Nintendo Power couple were saying like how immersive that was, even. Like, even though you're not... You know, even though you're not viewing the screen right in front of your face, they said it kind of felt like it. Just like the mere act of going into first person kind of made it feel more immersive than if you're like mm -hmm. just pressing a button, I think. Yeah. And they even had ways to just let kids screw around without the giant robot, where they put <laughs> somehow hook up the uh, Switch uh, gamepad in the uh, box backpack itself, and then you can adjust the sounds you make so you're basically having kids walk around like they're Godzilla. No, like, no, well, yeah, well, more like you're a one man band. Like you can do, oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You hit your like your your kick pedal. You've got your cymbals, I guess. I don't know what instruments were there, but yeah, it, you can make your own music. So it almost tied more into the piano, to the Toycon piano idea, than than the robot at that point. I want a video, Andre, where you go walk, <laughs> you know, around San Francisco <laughs> as a one man Toycon oh man, God. and just just the reactions. I want that to I want that to be a okay. Thing so well, much. here's the thing. All right, dude. No, I've already like I already want to bring one so one of you over here, but I need a cameraman to to record this. We'll do that. We'll go around San Francisco. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the one man man. You know, and you know, the, it, that will probably be the least one of the lesser weird things people see all day actually around here. So ah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. the, the Toycon robot it really does. I don't know, it's hard, because it really does look so interesting, and of course, the Nintendo Power Couple just loved yeah. it, especially with regard to the weight resistance with, with, with the, you know, the handles, and I think that really probably goes a long way toward making you feel really weighted down and like you're a giant robot. At the same time, though, I don't know, after seeing, like, some of the stuff in the variety trailer, like the fish, like, especially the fishing and the, uh, the motorbike, I don't, it's hard, because the robot looks so cool, and you get, you know, it is obviously, you know, there's some depth there in terms of the challenges and such, but it is only one thing. Right. Whereas, you know, as cool as that is, I do like the idea that there are a lot of little, like, lesser cool things that you can do in the variety pack. It's, it's a tough choice. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, I think I think the Toy-Con robot makes a great, you know, is great for the marketing campaign. Like, yeah, you become a robot. How cool is that? That you built yourself. But in terms of, like, replayability or even creativity, I think it comes up way short compared to the variety kit. Like, if you're looking just for one kit to give your kid the maximum amount of value... Based on what we're seeing here, I think the variety kit's a way to go. Um, there's just so much more to do there, so many more activities, and it's just more practical too. Like, the, as, as awesome as the robot looks, how many times are you really going to throw in that robot suit to play the same somewhat simple looking games, right? Or challenges, Right. I yeah, I don't have kids, so it's hard for me to say, but I don't know. I, I almost have a feeling kids would be more drawn to the robot kit than the variety pack, just because of the power fantasy of the robot kit. Yeah. I mean, that's like, true. Yeah. I don't know. I can just imagine myself as a kid getting much more into that. It's like, don't you want to play the piano? No. Nah. <laughs> I want to stomp around as a giant robot. Uh, what if you play the piano as a giant robot, Derek? I think you can pull that off. <laughs> you just need a couple of switches. <laughs> um, I, since I've already mentioned a lot of things that these games reminded me of, this totally reminds me of Blast Core, where you, fly, where you flew around as oh, a, yeah. the J-Bomb, I think, or J-Bomber or whatever, and you actually landed on buildings. And that was awesome. So the fact, mm. you know what? So maybe you're on to something there. If I can actually be that in real life, uh, that could be pretty incredible. So 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's really clever. Like, I was like, I, I was wondering how they're going to handle walking. But yeah, it just automatically steps forward as you uh, take, like, raise your foot up and step down. Mm. And uh, it's, I don't know, it, there's something really clever about it. You mentioned the Kinect. I was actually thinking of the Kinect as well. Like, this is the Kinect fully real, realized with tactile field feedback, at least with this game. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to say something, too. Crap, I forgot what it was. So, Oh, speaking of, like, when you're walking around, I don't know if you know this little detail there, but, like, even when you're turning, like, you know how you have your the wheels from the, you know, obviously you can turn into a car, so you have the mm -hmm. wheels there. They're actually underneath your feet. So when you rotate in place, instead of your character just awkwardly turning like in a lot of games, it's actually the wheels turning that cause you to spin when you're turning in place. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, isn't it? That is really cool. <laughs> and then you get all the customization. I, I don't know. I think kids, this is the one I think kids are going to lean towards more. Well, they'll actually be leaning as a robot, so yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. My point proven. Yep. You know, Nintendo has this, this habit of like showing a trailer that... You know, either, you know, it's sometimes underwhelms. In this case, I think Labo hit it out of the park with the initial trailer. But then the second trailer always shows you, like, the full potential of the product. Like, shows you even more about it, like, things you may not have even expected. And that's kind of what they did here. Like, they actually added more than I was kind of expecting, even based on the first trailer. Like, I knew there'd be more to it. But I didn't expect quite this much. Again, I don't know how much longevity uh, everything will have here. But it does seem like, especially for the variety kit, like, I think from what I'm seeing right here, like, that definitely justifies its price price point. The robot for me is still a little bit of a harder sell, even if I love everything else about it, but like when you compare the two, I think for me right now, like the variety kit's still the way to go, but uh, like both look like a lot of fun. I'm really impressed with what I've seen here. Like I really want to try this myself. Come on Nintendo. <laughs> it might be that San Francisco <laughs> event. <laughs> I mean those kids in the trailers looked like they were having a blast, so yeah. that's something. I, I think, uh, and I guess this is, I'm going to swoop in with the boring old adult oh, angle man. here, because I'm a boring old adult, but I like I see. I'm all about Labo. I, I think it's really cool. My concern, I guess, still is with the longevity, and, and not just with the software, but in terms of its. And I mentioned this with the in the discussion with the Nintendo Power Couple that that Guitar Hero Rock Band element of things just of these these physical peripheral things that you've built just piling up and and gathering dust. And it, I don't know. I like I I already have so such limited space in my apartment already, and such limited floor space and display space. I do, you know, that part of me does worry about the longevity of having these cardboard creations just sitting around mm. and, you know, and, and just, you know, how much longevity will they actually have? What, what will I want to do with these after I've exhausted the software element, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's always sort of the risk when it comes to toys in general. Sure. Kids. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. I want to make it clear. That's toy. not a... Yeah, that's not a problem that's Labo specific. That's you get that problem with any peripheral or toy or or physical thing. It's just something I've been thinking about, but it's certainly not something that Labo uniquely has a problem with or anything. Yeah, I mean the thing is, I I think this is really cool technology. I think kids have the absolute ability to just fall in love with these ideas and what they can do, but they will move on, and that's why Nintendo has variety kits, uh, and they'll be able to introduce more and more things, and we've seen some of those ideas uh, in the initial trailer itself. It's going to happen, and the thing is, as cool as this technology is, and I, I think it's really neat, I'm not going to be picking up Labo. It's it's just not for me, but I think as a concept, as, an, as something that kids can get into, it is brilliant, and it really is going to I'm, I'm i'm gonna be very curious when uh 420 comes around and uh all these kids are picking up labo and just seeing the general general reaction and how well it's doing and the creativity on display on social media and what people are doing with the uh different kits and whatnot so that's what i'm excited for but the game itself i'm probably gonna skip one i still think yeah i still think it's gonna be huge so i mean obviously it's aimed more yeah. towards more towards kids but i think Parents will have fun with it as well, especially you know, even if it's during the building process. But yeah, I, I really do think Nintendo has a hit on their hands here. Um, and yeah. this is just the initial concept. Yeah, we've already seen some of the upcoming products as well, presumably. But even beyond that, like I think this will be a thing that can keep going for a while. And at this point, you know, I think I might be a little bit more skeptical in our initial discussion. I can't quite remember. At this point, I really am fully expecting some kind of Labo crossover with their mainline games. Not as a requirement for anything, but I could definitely see optional support in some of their games. Like, <clears throat> you know, for instance, what if you could use that camera, the camera Labo thing we saw, in Yoshi's Woolly World just to take pictures. Like, what if you had, you know, you could take, like, you know, zoom in, zoom out, you know, and that game's already based on cardboard, which is why I bring it up. I mean, I guess I guess then you just run into, and I, I think I mentioned this, you just run into the potential perception issue where 
you know, you've got these games, but mm. certain features are locked behind sixty plus dollar peripherals, well, which is kind of what. Well, the other thing is, is they mainly use the Joy Con, so unless they're doing like the scanning stuff that the uh, the piano does, like I'm thinking of like the track creator. You could do that with even without that little thing above it. You could do the yeah, scanning exactly, without right. that. You don't need right. the cardboard in the in a lot of these cases. The cardboard sort of enhances the toy element of it. So if all of a sudden, uh, like we did get an Excite Bike switch, and there's a track creator, and you could do the same method, all you need to do is like, okay, here's your uh, bike, wave around the blue, the uh, Joy-Con. There you go. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a good point. Like, the, the Switch itself really has no idea, like, if it's, you know, in a lab or, or yeah, in a Toy-Con or not, right? Um, mm -hmm. And even if it needs to, like, you could probably fool it, you know, by printing out things or whatever. So, um, granted, as I prove as I prove myself, it's going to be a lot harder to, re to recreate those if you want to. But, yeah, there's nothing about the Labo itself that you couldn't, you know, you could just hold the Joy-Cons and mimic the motions and it would work pretty similarly, I would think. So... Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, my final thought here is I'm really impressed with, with what they've done and how they're using, making use of the technology, as Ash kind of touched on, like the fact that they're making use of HD rumble and like the camera, which is something I never expected them to really support, is, uh, you know, in the manner that they are, is just really cool. Like the fact that they're justifying its existence in a way that's thoroughly impressive is, is pretty neat. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree. All right. Well, I think we're about done here. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you like our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explained. You can find links to those in the description below. And, of course, stay tuned to Game Explained for lots more on Labo and everything else Nintendo Switch as well. Catch you later. Bye.